G'day everyone, Matt Elder of MattElder.com here, and today we're going to look at the developing standard around the LEGO Scenario Boxes. This is the second video in the series, and be sure to check out MattElder.com forward slash scenario for the LEGO Scenario Resources page. This is a Family Bricks video. Be sure to hit that like button, share, and if you want to be super awesome, subscribe. Click the bell and select all to be notified of new videos as they're uploaded. The standard. Just want to talk briefly about the standard that we've been developing around this, similar to how Great Ball Contraptions, GBC, and Micropolis buildings have standards. Thus, you can develop sections in modules that easily interconnect and switch around. In this case, too, where there are standard configurations and components, the drive components can be more readily plugged in. Thus one can spend more time on just theming and being creative with the overall scenario than spending days pulling your hair out trying to develop the drive mechanisms and gears as I've done to date. The action box is built on a 16 by 16 plate. In the middle of each side at the bottom is a 1 by 4 Technic brick with three holes in it. This allows the modules to be interconnected on all sides. On the 8th high brick Another Technic 1x4 with three holes is placed on two ends that allows the main drive shaft to go through it. This allows for the main axle height for any wheels to be placed on it. A drive motor is designed to be connected easily at this height. By doing so, it gives a one brick height at the base for any Technic gears and other axles to be out of the way of objects which might be turning or bumping into it. The height of the box is 10 bricks high with a finishing layer of tiles if desired. This can help to securely connect any bricks. The 10 brick height also enables the maximum height of objects to be placed on the wheels. In this case, this is a three length bar. So it can rotate to the edge and all the way around without hitting anything and gives you the maximum height to play around with in styling and theming out the bands. The 10 brick height can also hide out any of the visual noise from the gears and pulleys so it can just focus on seeing the actual elements themselves more. The 10 high brick also means the boxes can be placed in front of any GBC module and help theme out anything in that direction. On the back side, drive axles will run two bricks up high and three in from the stud position. They are generally designed with a Technic wheel knob on the left sitting half a brush pin out and a Technic 20 gear tooth bevel on the right sitting flush. Thus they can connect straight into the drive mechanism because you can see here you have a matching Technic wheel knob here and a gear to drive the bevel there when it comes together. We've tried to design this so it's hot swappable so you can go through connect it up like that maybe tweak one of the gears in there which aren't sitting correctly but then could just go to keep it really quick simple and interchangeable looking at the billboard module you can see the gear and the technic knob these will connect up to for the time being i've made this piece here easily detachable at a later date you could build in but i find it's really handy for maintenance and if you're trying to design things out being able to get in there and just move things around It also adds support for taking weight from the upper part of the structure so it can come down here or on these legs. You have space here for a power functions L motor to slide in and connect the main drive wheels. One of these here, and I've just added some lift arms on the bottom. And from the back, I'll just come in and slide in there. By having those lift arms on the bottom, it stops the motor from rotating around and can power the main action box unit. I did have it so you can have a couple of gears coming off here which will then drive the main unit but I was finding it wasn't providing enough torque for the designs which I've come up with here. The other motor to drive the unit connects in here. It's a bit of a basic setup at the moment and probably needs further refinement but it just allows for flexibility while this is still being developed. Initially these 40 tooth gears are all about slowing the motor speed down. The wheels and billboards don't need to turn at a great speed to get a nice effect. Actually the opposite is true. I find the power coming directly out of the motors will spin everything way too fast and you need to slow it down. 
So you have the power coming into here. It goes along these 40 tooth gears to slow it down. On this one here, it then comes down to this corkscrew, which again, really slows it down and it splits off into the other gear and the knob, which powers anything low down, such as these ones. If you continue along for the corkscrew, you come up here, over across this other 40 tooth gear, up to here, and then into this tan one, which drives the main unit of the upper billboard. All the while, that's just slowing it down. From the other side of this tan gear here, you have a black one there as well, and you can actually add in another two gears in there, so you could have a drive unit coming off here, which would then be at the right height for this. But for the designs I've used, I've just used the, the main motor there. If you only want to use one motor, then you have to have enough torque to be able to do so. And that rotates up and comes off easily enough. So you can always put different size motors or change the direction here. There's still plenty of space. To take the billboard off so you can swap over to another one, you just disconnect the 1x16 and a 2x16 adjacent to each other. That then gives you easy access to the treads in here. And you just need to jiggle them apart. It's pretty stiff. And then that whole unit there just pops off. And you can just pop back on the 1x16 effectively and a 2x16 on the other side and you have your design back. So just move that out of the way. Looking at the unit itself, as we said, the main power comes to driving it through this tan gear there and see so just turn that that then turns that whole shaft there you then have the sprockets here and the two ones here then drive the main treads so if we have our design from the front side like that and then on the back you can see there's two lots of treads, each of 20 links. These are the treads with the two hole pins in the middle. And you can see then they just line up there on these two main sprockets to drive it. If you think normally you'd have tank tracks, which would sort of go like that and then wrap around and drive like that. All we've done then is just taken that idea, put it vertical, and then we're putting lift arms and spacings in between so that the weight from the top can come all the way down into the supports and the pillars and onto the ground. So the main power comes up through here and turns that. And then you have the treads wrapping around it. You do have this other one here, which will turn. Initially thought as you had the treads going around, there'd be enough power so that then you could turn this around and then from that have another axle here, which could drive something but I found that the treads just are a little bit too loose and this doesn't turn and it slips. But in the future, it could be adapted to either provide secondary power if you had a really heavy turning billboard. So the billboard is 16 studs high. You've got the two treads of 20 each going across there. So theoretically, you can have this at any height that you want. All you'd need to do then is just adjust this sprocket and drive unit here with these spaces so if you wanted it to be higher you put more of these spaces in so that it would lift it up if you actually want it to be small or you don't have enough pieces you could then just take this top one off and just have it there maybe being six or eight studs high the billboard is alternating one by 16 and two by 16 plates to create the one by 16 i've actually done it with two one by eight and then have a one by two plate in there to join it. I find this to be really flexible. So if you did want something much higher, you can then move this up and then you just maybe rather than using a one by eight system, you might have one by tens or one by twelves or whatever it is to get the height that you need. And in this instance where I didn't have enough of the two by sixteens, then when I got to here, I then started using two by eights and you can join them together as well. So you can then make it up of whatever components and pieces that you have around and not purely limited by if you don't have a 2x16 or enough of them, then you can't build it. They're connected to the treads using half pins, which plug into the anti-studs. There is always just something very satisfying about just 
having that roll over and hearing that click away. We use the Technic Link Tread Wide with two hind poles, number 57518 here. Surprisingly, with the layer of plates and tiles, this actual billboard does become quite heavy. You could possibly use the smaller 1x3 link treads, but they just, I think, unclip way too easily. And you saw previously, it was a bit of an effort to get the actual larger pinhole treads to disconnect. And even with that, I don't feel that that's about to unclip because you can place a one wide plate in and possibly generate the same effect. But the other issue with this is you're only gonna be have one wide on each of them. Whereas by having the alternating two by ones, it enables you to have more flexibility in putting slightly wider two by something plates on and having things like minifigs. And in this case, to connect the Death Star in there, you actually needed a two by one jumper plate and then putting some hooks onto the top of it so you could then clip onto the actual ring piece which is sitting in behind and then having the pole piece going in there to connect the radar dishes. I only built one billboard power unit but have two of these billboard tracks. That's why through the video you'll randomly see either the Wave or the Star Wars design on the billboards. First up, remove the last 1x16 and 2x16 plate on each end of the treads. For the wave, you can just lie it down and I try to align the join over these lift arm L pieces. Thus when you push down, you have something offering resistance so it becomes possible to clip the treads together. Place the 1x16 and the 2x16 plate designs back on. 20 treads seem to be the magic number for this configuration. 19 was just too tight and wouldn't join. And there you have it, a billboard designed quickly and easily swapped over. I'll give the gears a quick test to make sure they are rotating freely. And now it's ready to be joined up to the action box. The front display I found visually works best when you're using an 8x16 plate. In doing so, the 1x4 Technic brick with three holes needs to go in the middle on the long sides of the 8x16 plate. On the short sides, on each of the corners, we placed a 1x2 Technic brick with a hole. Thus, two of these can be connected up and you'll still keep the 16x16 16 16 grid. And given that those are the holes there, they can then go and anchor into any other box. The Star Wars one does cheat this a little bit by not having one of these Technic 1x4 three holes on the front, but that's because using the snot technique to get that front plate in place, but it still does have the two 1x2 with the hole on each of the corners. But that said, I'm also not anticipating having anything connecting up to the front on this one. It might be possible in the future to refine the crank arm which drives the X-Wing so it doesn't need to have this extra space for this plate on the front. Having all these Technic bricks in the same consistent place means if you were to put pins there, because they're all together, you'd then be able to join them together in a display like that. And you can imagine if you had them all in the same theme, like saying they're all the Star Wars movies, so you might have episode four, five, and six, then it can be a nice piece all coming together. In the three boxes, we've generally been using these one by two by five bricks for the walls, but there's nothing really to stop you using anything else. It just helps to be able to build out the boxes really quickly by using large chunky pieces like these. We just happen to have a number of these pieces, and recently they have been on the picker brick walls, so you can get a cup full pretty easily. They're also pretty quick to optimally stack as they usually also have a plate of some description on the bigger brick wall. So you can just grab the plate and then stack them in relatively quickly without wasting too much time. You know, get a, get a number of these going and then they fit not quite nicely even into a small cup. So you can get them really quickly and really cheaply. If you go to madelder.com forward slash scenario, it will bring up this homepage to the Lego scenario. 
It will be the main resource page where I'll have videos like this one, the standard instructions and other resources. It's only early days, so plan on building this out as a resource over time. So do be sure to check this out and come back to it if you are looking at doing any buildings of your own. In the next video, we'll look at the gears that drive the various wheel mechanisms and the origin of the scenario name. You can also check out part one video that gives a more general overview, which should be linked around this video. This is a Family Bricks video. Be sure to hit that like button, share, and if you want to be super awesome, subscribe. Click the bell and select all to be notified of new videos as they're uploaded. Thanks very much for watching. Here are some other videos you might find of interest. And until next time, when we talk about all things Lego.